they've got at the end of exercise 3B just a couple of random questions that then tries to connect back to argand diagrams because this is actually a really popular way that this gets examined, um, connecting together complex numbers from year one with polar coordinates from year two. So part A of the question just says, show on an argand diagram the locus of points given by the values of Z satisfying this. So I'm hoping you've remembered this. What would this be representing? A circle. Center, because it's you would subtract, wouldn't you? To subtract three plus four i, so it's the center three four, and a radius of five. So they want you to sketch that for part A of the question. So three along, four up. Is it going to be crossing the axes? Where? Um, There's something, I think there's something quite specific about this. If it's going three along and four up and the radius is five, I think you know something really specific about where it's going to be crossing. It's a three, four, five triangle, so it's going to go through the origin. Because I know if this distance here is three and this is four, I know that that's going to be five. So when it's a circle, it's going to be a circle going through the origin. You need to be thinking of those things. If you ever see three, four, and five and you don't consider the fact that it's going to be a Pythagorean triple, you're missing something. It's nearly always going to have that kind of thing. Now, I was going to sketch it, and then I suddenly remembered I've got a whiteboard. So I'm actually going to sketch it like, oh, it's coming out silly, though. So let's do it like this. OK. <laughs> yeah, have you drawn one with an egg or a dimple or? <laughs> and so we've got the center, which is 3, 4. And interestingly, we knew, God, that's a terrible line, we knew that it was going to go through the origin because of that. OK, now we're just going to connect this back together. That's just, a, that's just revision, right? That's just stuff from year one. Then it wants you to show that the locus of this point can be represented by the co polar curve r equals 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta. Good. What we're going to do is we're going to go from the Argand to Cartesian, and then we're going to go to polar. And that's it. So what's the Cartesian equation? No, what's the Cartesian equation of this? We don't have to do any multiplying by that. X minus 3 squared plus Y minus 4 squared equals 25. And we're just going to change that into a polar. How do I change it into a polar? Uh, you could do, but I tend to think it's more elegant to go from what you know to what they want to show, rather than what they've told you to go backwards. So I know that x is equal to r cos theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. So I'm just going to. I don't know. I personally think it's, it doesn't make a difference. I would personally would sub it straight in, but you don't have to. You can expand it and then do it. Just whatever you prefer. So that's going to be r cos theta minus 3 all squared plus r sine theta minus 4 all squared equals 25. r squared cos squared theta minus 6 r cos theta plus 9 plus r squared sine squared theta minus 8 sine theta plus 16 equals 25. Oh, I've got a um, missing R there. What do you notice will happen? The 25 is going to go because 16 and 9 is 25, so I'll replace that with a 0. Yeah, good. Here you've got r squared cos squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta, which is just going to add to r squared because of the Pythagorean identity. So this bit and this bit is just going to be r squared. I'm going to put the 6r cos theta and the 8r sine theta onto the other side. And then I can cancel the r, so I get r equals 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta. Just going to do that little bit as an aside here. r squared cos squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta is equal to r squared cos
pi squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is just r squared, just to show what we were doing there. You, you wouldn't need to go into that detail if you were doing that kind of thing. So we can just try question three and question four that's just at the end of that exercise there, just to really kind of flag up that this can be done with argand diagrams as well. And then when I see you guys next time, we'll be moving on to integration. But I know we haven't fully done integration in normal math, so I'm also going to recap you with what integration will look like for trigonometry. But it's going to be obvious, okay?